Hey everybody, guess what? It's uh, Steve Simonson, your old buddy, and we're coming again with another episode of Awesomers.com. This one, episode number 206. That's right, 206 episodes later, and we're still here, still doing it. Now, that means you just go to Awesomers.com slash 206, and you see if you see maybe notes, maybe show details, maybe even some links, or maybe an error 404, you won't know until you go try it out. So today, I'm uh, continuing my mini series about what happens when you run out of stock and with my buddy and expert uh andy slamens hey andy how are you pal hey steve good thanks for having me always enjoy talking all things amazon especially this topic of re-ranking products boy oh boy that is the uh so the the question uh, to frame it for the those who may not have listened to some of the other components of this or to just level set with everybody is you know let's just say for the sake of discussion that uh, you ran out of inventory, and then when you put the product back, you feel like it didn't just jump back to where it was. Is this a, a, a scenario you've seen before, Andy? Sure. Um, so I, I think, you know, I'm sure your other guests that you've had on uh, have uh, different answers as well. Um, I think there's a number of things that it depends upon. One is uh, how long have you had that product in at Amazon? Originally, uh, meaning from launch to the point you went out of stock. Okay. Correct. Yep. So, you know, have you had that product live and active for say two years straight before you went out of stock? Okay. Uh, and in my experience, and again, you know, this is probably going to be how all the answers are, right? Kind of anecdotal. It's our experience. None of us really know how uh, Amazon's algorithm uh, ranks or re-ranks products. Um, but in my experience, products that I've had longevity of remaining in stock, uh, as well as longevity at a, um, at a similar rank. So let's just say like I sell in the baby category. Uh, I have a product that I've had in stock for three years, and it fluctuates between 2,000 and 4,000 rank. So I've been selling that product for four years. It's been between 2,000 and 4,000 rank without ever going out of stock. Now, at the end of those three years, if I happen to go out of stock, and this is a real life example <laughs> uh -oh. that, that I've had. <laughs> Spoiler alert, everybody, if there's a pain train coming. All right, keep going. That's right. So, you know, I, uh, uh, it's a very good seller and I kind of took my eye off the ball for whatever reason and keep track of my inventory. Uh, and I went out of stock. And so, you know, with a product like that, it's a home run product. You go in a little bit of a panic mode. Um, well, I was only out of stock for about 24 days. So got the supply chain running again, was able to get it back in stock. And thankfully uh, for this particular listing, it only took about two or three days and Amazon placed that right back where it was on the first page of search in the very similar position. Um, and so you know, one of my answers would be if you've had a product that has longevity, and I don't know what that number is, if that's 20 months, 24 months, but if you've had that product and it's remained in stock and you're able to bring it back in stock, you know, within a month, again, this is just going on my personal experience, um, that it's going to re-rank relatively quickly. All now, right. now the on. other, just, the, oh, go, go ahead, please. Uh, I just, I, I think we're vectoring the same way. Go ahead. You, you're about to paint another scenario. Yeah. So the other scenario is you spent all this time in researching and you brought this great product to the Amazon marketplace. And, you know, you, you expect that you're going to sell a certain amount of units, you know, over the first four months. So you're going to have enough time to reorder, right. And get more stock in. Uh, so it's a, it's a new product. Um, and so you bring it into Amazon and then boom, it just goes gangbusters and you run out of inventory in a month when you projected it was going to last you four months. Uh, and so in that scenario, again, this is in my experience, those type of products are a little harder to rank. And so what I have to do then is when I bring that product back in stock, I have to spend a whole lot more money on PPC to get that product re-ranked again. And again, it, it depends on how long it's out of stock. And so I sold it, sold through them within a month, and then it took me another three months to get it back in stock. It just seems like Amazon doesn't give the same amount of love to that product as they do to one that I've had on their platform for three years. So that the, the takeaway there is 
the more kind of uh, placement equity that you have on Amazon, the longer duration that listing was live previously seems to be correlation with how the recovery goes. It's either a really tough sled and if it's a relatively new product, especially for an extended outage, right? Everybody see all these variables dropping in or it's relatively fast snapback if it's been a long-term product with a relatively short outage. Is that fair summary? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a, that's an excellent way to look at it. Now the, the question always comes to is <clears throat> for that product, you know, that, and again, there's a lot of variables, right? For that product that I was, you know, sold within a month and then came back within three months. Was it because, you know, maybe there's more competition, you know, for those keywords, maybe, you know, in that three months, maybe there were more listings, you know, that popped up. Uh, therefore it made it harder to rank. I'm not sure. But I do agree with that if you have a product that is consistently selling within, you know, a similar BSR over a length of time and you happen to go out of stock, that Amazon definitely will give preferential treatment to that type of listing when it comes back in stock. And it's almost like, you know, now and, and then on the other hand, I will say there are some times where in that scenario, like I shared, where I've went out of stock for a month and then I come back, where I just kill the original listing. And, and it all depends on how many reviews you have. Uh -huh. So that's another factor. You yeah, know, so, so like this is this a math problem for you. <laughs> yeah, you're like, how long has the listing been alive? Right. How long have I been out of stock? And how many reviews am I trying to preserve? Or the alternative, it seems like you're leading me towards relaunch that thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, like on, on, you know, some products that we've had, if we don't have a lot of reviews on them and we hit that scenario where we, we launch it and then boom, it sells out. We're not going to come back in stock for a while. As long as there's not a lot of reviews on it, we will just relaunch it again because for sure, which makes sense to me. And again, like this not verifiable, right? We don't know anybody on Amazon, but the, the honeymoon period it does continue to seem to me when you launch a brand new product that Amazon does favor it a little bit again, which makes sense because how else are, are you going to get anything seen in search when you bring it to the catalog? Yeah. So this, the, the urban legend of uh, the honeymoon period is pretty widespread, which means a lot of people have experiences that seem to support this underlying philosophy. Yes. Correct. That, uh, so the honeymoon period exists, but by the same token, a, opposite of honeymoon period could exist, like a penalty phase, right? Where you're a new product, you ran out of stock, your price is too high compared to the competition, right? And that's actually, for those who are watching the video version, I put up my little buddy uh, Rex here because he, <laughs> Amazon's algorithm acts like a predator, right? <laughs> you, your listing is either great and it tears in and, and has a great meal, or it just destroys you and discards you uh, for the other guys in the background to come and eat you. Is that a fair, uh, uh, metaphor? Yeah, a absolutely. And, you know, what we're discovering more and more too is, uh, you know, Amazon favors, and, and I'm sure we all know this, the products that they themselves sell. And so, um, you know, that's just like another variable you have to throw in the mix. If you're competing in a niche where you're competing with products that Amazon sells. And so, you know, maybe they're not, I'm not talking about Amazon basics, but you know, if just Amazon is a seller through one P and we're seeing this on a number of our products, uh, you know, on our listing detail page, Amazon themselves will, you know, say, Hey, here's a similar product. And they have a picture of a product that's similar to ours. Right. Uh, and so uh, that's kind of going off the course of what we're talking about re-ranking. However, um, you know, that's just another variable you got to think about. Well, it is, it is a variable. And so, the, you know, while we'll stay in the, the center of our target today uh, with regard to the re-ranking, all those factors you just uh, talked about, you know, is there more competition in PPC? Is there more competition in listings? Has Amazon joined the fray? All of these are variables that are kind of contextual to your own situation, right? So nobody can can deduce and divine all of these variations ourselves for every situation. So there's no set pat answer, but the, the core question comes back to, can you re-rank an item? And Andy's saying, yeah, you can re-rank an item, especially if it's an older item for short out of stocks. That's summary one. Yes. Summary two is if you're going to try to re-rank an item that is a relatively short term product on Amazon, 
and was out for an extended period. Uh, is it, let's say, uh, 60 days, Andy? Sure. Is that a, so yep. more than 60 days. Uh, then that's going to be tougher sledding. So maybe just relaunch that thing and yeah, grab and again, that honeymoon. It, Yep. And it, it would, for me, it all depends on the reviews, yeah. you know, like, you know, you don't want to ditch a listing necessarily that has 12 or more four and a half star reviews and, uh, or above. Uh, so because so those reviews are valuable. Let's talk about that number. Uh, so, and, and actually let's, let's flip it. Let's say you have 25 or 50 reviews kind of in that range and you got a decent, you know, four and a half star. So you got, it looks good on the, the little star graphic. Can you just relaunch with a variation and kind of capture the parent uh, reviews or what's your, you know, in other words, uh, maybe it was the 2020 version. Now you got the 2021 20, version coming out. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, you, you definitely can do that. Um, however, I would say that that might be um, skirting the, the TOS just a little bit. You got to be careful. Like you said, there has to be a legitimate reason of why that variation, um, why, why you're making it a variation um, to the parent, right? And, uh, and, and I will say that we have done that a few times um, and, and you do have to be careful. So you have to make sure that, you know, it is, there is something different about that product, but that for our experience, that works. Yeah. So Amazon and, looks at that as a new listing. Yeah. And it's, it's, by the way, for, you know, I've been in the electronics business a number of times and, you know, as you get the next iteration, sometimes you've made a chip change or sometimes you've made some other minor change that is not uh, visually so obvious, but it's technologically or some infrastructure wise legit. And so as long as it's legit and you're not trying to sell against the other SKU, my sense is that you have lower jeopardy. Is that, and I'm not yes. trying to parse your words. Is that a yeah, no, statement? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just would, I, I would just be careful and make sure you know what you're doing and, and just know that you could run the risk of variation abuse, which Amazon doesn't like at all now. And, you know, it depends on how aggressive uh, the bots are, uh, but you, you do need to be careful about variation abuse when you're doing that. Yeah, and this is a lot different than saying, I sell, you know, um, lighting and i found a boat anchor with a, a ten thousand reviews that i variationed on right the the old zombie listing or any of these other black hat tricks so um yeah i i think that that's right there is some jeopardy so let's just let's take the hard scenario andy and just yep. determine if there's hope or not you've got an out so a limited time a launch time let's say you know 60 day launch time you blew it out quick now you're out of stock 60 days you've got 50 reviews what what's what do you look at with that situation? Yeah, so again, if the reviews are you know four and a half or above, they're very positive, then I I would relaunch it on that listing, and and just have the understanding that you're gonna be spending money on PPC, um, so you're gonna have to be more aggressive. Uh, your bids are gonna be higher, uh, but you know over time, as long as you're consistent, you know with running those those bids on the PPC you're going to re-rank faster because having those reviews is going to help you convert so much better, which is going to signal to Amazon that shoppers are buying your product through those keywords. So frame, frame some variables over what period of time do you know if that's working and over, you know, how much are you increasing and what are you increasing? Is it your budget, your, your clicks and you know, so what do you yeah. change by how much and over what period of time do you know it works? Yeah. So the lawyer's answer would be, it depends. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, my, I've, uh, I don't see my uh, degree here, so I'm right. going to skip that one and say, what's the real people say? <laughs> uh, you know, it really, it really does. It depends on the niche that you're in. You know, if you're in a supplement niche that, you know, where you're spending like $6 a click, you're going to have to spend a whole lot more money, you know, to get your, your, your uh, listing re-ranked. Uh, you know, again, if you're, if you're fighting in a niche that is not as competitive, there's not a lot of listings, then your spend is going to be less, but, you know, percent wise, I, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if I could give you a percent. I, I would just say, you know, for me, again, if you have 50 reviews and they're four and a half stars or above, you are going to have to spend on PPC, but you're going to get there quicker than it, it, 
in my um, experience sure. than relaunching a brand new listing with zero reviews. So again, it comes back that it comes back down to reviews too a lot. And again, we don't know how much Amazon plays reviews in the role of re-ranking that product. So the baby product I was talking about, it has 800 reviews, four and a half stars or above. So if I'm Amazon, I'm thinking my customers really like this product. And so therefore, when it goes out of stock and it comes back in stock, if I'm Amazon, I want to show this to my customers because they like it. Uh, and so, you know, to me, that would, you know, same thing. If you have 50 reviews, it, Amazon has some data there you know, as long as you're willing to play that PPC game that they're going to re-rank that product faster than if it's a brand new product. Yeah, I think all of that's fair. And it does, in fact, depend uh, with or without regard to your legal status uh, as a full-fledged <laughs> attorney practicing or otherwise. But the, the, the truth is, as, a, as an entrepreneur, we need some basis of analysis, right? So do we look at that after seven days, after 30 days? H how long do we spend extra to know if it's working or not? Because you can't spend forever, I, right? And not yeah. See it work. So I, I would say I would say a minimum of thirty days. Okay. So there are a number of products that I've done have had this scenario happen before, and it cost me ten thousand dollars over those thirty days to be able to get that product back ranked in the on the first page in the spot that I wanted it to be ranked. So I mean, ten thousand is all relative to some sure. sellers. That's nothing, and then to smaller sellers, you know, that's a significant amount. But that that's what I had to spend. Is it fair to say that 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 was a substantial sales base for that item that you were trying to protect and re-rank? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that particular listing sells twenty thousand dollars a month. Yeah. So you you basically said I need to get back there. I got to invest what I got to invest to get back there, and I I know I can get back there. Did you change anything with your PPC other than the amount of spend? Like, did you no, widen just, the targets or any of that? No, just the amount of spend, you know, and again, like even for something like that, where you know that it was ranking before, but yet you, now you have to dump more money into it. It's still, it's still painful, but at the end of the day, right, it's a numbers game. And so, you know, if I can get that back into that place of search where it was, I know I'm going to generate the amount of sales that I need and long-term I'm going to get that money back. Let me just go back for a minute. When you go out of stock, and, you know, I think prevention is worth a pound of cure. Try not to go out of stock. But uh, it, we all do at some level, right? Because the number of SKUs and the variables and so on. When you go out of stock, what's your opinion? Should they close the listing? Do, does it matter? Um, so I, I know that there are um, some folks out there that have the thought that you need to close the listing as soon as, soon as it goes out of stock. Personally, for me, the last six years that I've been selling on Amazon, I've never closed a listing. So I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm just telling you that I've never done it and I've been able to re-rank products, um, you know, in these types of scenarios. So Fair yeah, enough. that's, that's yeah, my that's, experience. That's what we want is your real life experience. So because so, my thing is this, Steve, so I like to no. hear your thoughts on this. I mean, certainly Amazon is smart enough to know when a, a, a listing goes out of stock and maybe I'm wrong that closing it to me just wouldn't necessarily like glitch their algorithm when it comes to re-ranking. I could be wrong. Well, uh, the countervailing argument to that is that Amazon is a series, uh, you know, hundreds of algorithms tracking things. And then when, uh, if a data set stops coming in, like for example, you close the listing. So it stops tracking that, you know, your seven day sales history, your 14 day sales history, your 28 day sales history, whatever it is, those trends go significantly negative if the thing is open. Now, okay. the, the truth is, I've heard exactly both sides of the opinion where some people say closing doesn't matter and other people are like, absolutely close it. So, and mm. I don't know. And right. that also could have changed over time where mm. at one time these algorithms couldn't suss out these details and now that right. they can, right? They, they evolved. Right. And uh, my dinosaurs behind us should remember <laughs> that they are evolving day by day. Pretty soon there are robots that look like you and me and then they take your soul. So I don't know uh, is, is probably uh, the, the proper answer, but I, I do, I have some strong data, some underlying, I'll call it even inside information not proprietary, but soft-spoken, uh, fireside advice, if you will, uh -huh. where they say that not just the A9 algorithm takes into those sales trends into consideration, 
but also the PPC auction engine takes the sales trends into consideration. And that doesn't just mean sales, that means conversion. That means you know all the, the upstream metrics all the way down to the, the actual sale. Gotcha. What that means is, and you kind of have talked about this, you have to pay more on your PPC than the other guy in the auction because your trends are pretty crappy right now. Right. Right. Whether you closed or open, I can't say that's the defining factor. Uh, but if it doesn't hurt you to close it, as far as uh, as people can say, I mean, that's not for you to say because you've never right. done that. Others would say, well, if it doesn't hurt, then what's the difference? And right. it reminds you to you know be very judicious with your ons and offs. So I don't that's know true. the answer either, but I do know that the trends absolutely are factor in pay per click and in the A nine. If your trend is softer than your competition, they're going to rank higher than you. They're going to pay less per click than you. All of yeah. those things, those I believe are facts. Yes. Um, but I also believe the earth is flat. So what are you going to do? <laughs> That's a joke. Everyone who's sending me the hate mail right now, you can just keep it to yourself. Uh, I've been up high enough to see the arc of the earth. So uh, I don't I don't have any doubts. Um <laughs> All right, so Andy, you're, you're saying, again, if I summarize this, this is, would be the spoiler clip. There is hope. It's easier if your product is old. It's harder if the product is new, right? Yes. And the decision point for you comes down to the review count and whether or not you're trying to preserve reviews or not. And maybe somebody just does the math. They go, well, listen, I launched the thing. I got 50 reviews. I went out of stock. Pay per click is killing me. Maybe it's cheaper to just launch the thing and get 50 new reviews. In fact, we don't know, for example, if Amazon sees the reviews and the ratings as different things. Right. Right. Because you might get three written reviews and 47 clicks that are ratings, but right. the consumer just sees the stars up there right. and the number. They go, a lot of, you know, five stars and a lot of numbers next to it. That must mean it's trustworthy. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, the other piece of that too is <clears throat> if you did just launch it, it's the same manufacturer, the same product. And, and those were legitimate reviews, you know, that rolled in. You could be pretty confident then that you got a good product. And, uh, and most likely if you do have to relaunch it, the same, you know, good positive reviews should, should come in. So it's really going to come down to the, the seller's decision on what they want to do. Yeah, so it, just using Andy's math, which I think is all well-founded and experiential, if if spending a bunch of money over the course of one month is more, a lot more, for example, than just relaunching the thing and, and earning back those reviews kind of naturally, uh, then do the math yourself, right? Uh, that, that's, a reasonable, that's a reasonable thing. Uh, any other key takeaways that somebody should have on this topic, Andy? No, I mean, you know, I, I think that covers it uh, fairly well. Uh, again, I don't know if there's a one answer for every scenario or every product or every niche, but there definitely, like you just said, there is hope that, you know, if you do want to relaunch it or re-rank it, I've done it with a number of products, a number of listings in the various scenarios that we've talked about today. Um, and so you, you don't have to start over. Um, but if you feel like you want to, you have that option to start over as well, right? Well, and tell me, what, what's your opinion, you know, uh, the honeymoon period, right? Is it an urban legend or do you really think, it, you know, it's substantial? And if, if it is real, over what period of time does that really last? Uh, I, I, personally, I think it's 100% real. Um, time frame kind of really it's hard to gauge but i would say probably 12 to 14 days or maybe 10 to 14 days uh, but for sure when we bring new products to the marketplace initially it seems like they're much they get a lot more love from the amazon algorithm as far as ranking and then of course you know when you do start selling then you you know you're doing well when you get that badge you know like you know best or i forget what it's called now um, you know, the, the, whatever niche you're in, you'll, they'll give you a badge, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, for, man. for, uh, you know, bringing a product and look, when you re-rank a product, you can't get a badge like that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you true. only get, you only get that badge when you bring a brand new product to the marketplace. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Same question regarding Dracula. Real? And if so, how dangerous? No, I, I withdraw <laughs> that one. So uh, I do want to just make sure I highlight this. You basically say that PPC is your, that's your one and only tactic to kind of bring it back. Is there anything else they should be throwing into this equation? Or uh, did I miss that? Or is that your, your takeaway there? Yeah, I mean, we, we have a buyer's club, you know, that we utilize sometimes as well. Uh, and so we've, you know, spent a considerable amount of time um, building up, you know, what we call our fan base. So when we do have to re-rank products, we will send, you know, promo codes out to those customers. Um, and, and oftentimes they'll help us, you know, again, increase that sales velocity when we're trying to get that product ranked. I got you. And so these are promo code driven at various discounts. Uh, Correct. Yeah. Nothing, nothing ever under 50%. Okay. Um, you know, we feel like if you go under 50%, maybe the algorithm gives you a little less love. I don't know how much, but, uh, but yeah, it's always over 50. Which algorithm gives you the love in the case of a discount? Oh, uh, well, I mean, a Amazon, I, I don't know. You, maybe you can tell me. We feel like if you go under 50% that it could, you know, Amazon may not give you that kind of ranking juice, whereas if you stay over 50, they will. What are your thoughts That's on that? That's almost a converse uh, argument. In other words, you're saying the higher the discount and then a purchase is subsequently made, Amazon bakes that into the – the ranking in a, as a more positive indicator versus a lower discount. Is that no, what no, I'm sorry. I probably, opposite? yeah, I probably, yeah, it's opposite. I said okay. that the wrong way. So no more than 50% is your point. Correct. Okay. So that, that makes more sense. So I'm glad we dove in on that. So the, the, I generally agree with that, which is the higher you discount it, the more that Amazon will discount that sale. Correct. Yeah. And so, which is why a lot of people, you know, they, whether it's the, you know, hitting your own club, looking for, you know, uh, slightly discounted, but not giveaway type of things, mm -hmm. or people do, you know, the full price giveaways. What's your thoughts on the latter there? Well, you got to be careful <laughs> again. Um, you know, you, you have to be extremely careful. Like if you're using any type of rebates, um, you know, there's some rebate software out there. Uh, and so, you know, I know that there are some sellers that use that. Um, and you know, when you get a full price buy, obviously that really helps. Uh, I, I would just always caution sellers. Um, you need to be very careful if you're participating in that type of activity. Yeah. Yeah. I, I often talk about the, that, you know, those types of, um, setups the situations where you have uh, buyers who are running around doing all these full price buys but they all cross mojave amazon can see that toxic you know like snail trail uh, it's like uh, running through their system and goes oh look at these um thousand customers are always buying the same stuff right not not the same item necessarily but from these same people almost sequentially the same, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. the, the big data and the AI can can suss that out. And Amazon may know about it and may not be doing anything about it. Maybe they also don't care about it, right? If there's, there's a high argument that says uh, if a brand wants to rebate stuff, they can rebate stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, how Amazon deals with that is their business. It's, it's really nothing uh, for anybody else to deal with. So uh, anyway, I, I definitely appreciate those insights and uh, key things. Any... Uh, I know I already came to you kind of for your final uh, summary, but any uh, other words you want to leave with the sellers who may be facing this sort of situation? No, I mean, again, I just think there is hope, you know, and, and you do have options, right? And options are always good. Um, <laughs> you know, again, like you said, there is the, the variation option. If you use it, you know, judiciously and you understand what you're doing, uh, there's also the option of just, you know, creating a new listing and then re-ranking what we're talking about today. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. Hope, hope is there. Have hope, everyone. Um, Andy, where can people find some of the cool things that you do out there on the interwebs? Yeah, so uh, you know, I'm I'm basically on Facebook. I got a Facebook group. If you want to check it out, it's called Amazing Freedom. Just search Amazing Freedom on Facebook. My website's amazingfreedom.com. You can see the different things that I'm up to, and hopefully, uh, we'll be up to a trip 
at some point with you, Steve. Oh, when, man, uh, wouldn't that be something? Yeah. When, when the vaccine, which they came out in the news today, right? They're really close. So when that <laughs> thing gets uh, disseminated, hopefully we can start traveling again. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. We, you know, we, Andy and I were real, real close in January. So we did a trip last year uh, to China, we had a great time, wonderful mm. group, and, uh, you know, really in depth, uh, fun kind of sourcing adventure. And we were saying, all right, maybe we should do one to Canton in the spring of 2020. And in January, we're like, uh, we both sent each other a message. I think I led the message said, there's not a chance I'm going to China in April, even if the fair is still going. He's like, yeah, I was about to email you the same thing, right? You remember that? <laughs> That's right, yeah. Because we could see that this COVID thing was, well, we didn't call it COVID at the time. We call it the Wuhan coronavirus. <laughs> right. Uh, we knew it was something serious because China had just shut down for Chinese New Year, which is like, uh-uh. That'd yeah, be like and the, and all the Disney parks, yeah. all the movie theaters. <laughs> yeah. When all that stuff shuts down, you know, it's just nuts. So, but mm -hmm. one day, uh, whether it's Vietnam or China or both, or, you know, uh, we may, we've looked at other places, including, you know, Malaysia and India and even South America, but it's, you know, our purpose, at least I, I think Andy and I share this purpose is to have fun uh, mm. learn together and make business moves that have ROI. That's the, that's the ultimate. Yeah, that's right. And that, that trip, the last trip that we went on was by far the best trip I've ever had business wise. And I think I've been to China now six different times in China. It was the best trip by far. I love it. Well, that's great to hear. We certainly, we know how to pick the restaurants, everybody. That's the key takeaway. <laughs> if you want to eat, you find Steve because he knows all the good places in China. And hotel lounges. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm a specialist. <laughs> that's for sure. Everybody's got to have a skill. Everyone's got to have a skill. That's mine. All right. Uh, thanks uh, to Andy for generously uh, donating his time. As always, uh, Osmers, thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, you know, it's okay to leave a five-star review. And uh, if you want to leave less than uh, well, then get off this channel. I hate you. Uh, no, <laughs> leave whatever you want, but go leave a review and share it and do all the things that people do. Awesomers.com slash 206 is this episode. And until we meet again, Awesomers, we'll see you later.